Influencers use their personalities to help promote brands or products, but some are not real people. These virtual figures freed from real-life scandals, able to travel anywhere in an instant, are Virtual idol groups these days are being created, and the impact they are having on the, the real The advent of cutting-edge ICT technology has transformed the music industry in recent years. Celebrities singers and singers are meeting their fans or holding concerts in the metaverse. The virtual world is even used to create new stars. You find ways to root them in reality. You find ways to make them feel believable. This video is brought to you by Clipbox. As the Korean music industry was being transformed by groups such as HOT, SES, Zetskis, and Babybox, simultaneously, another type of singer was preparing to debut. The only difference between these two types is their flesh and blood. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Midnight Theories, and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Today, we are diving deep into the story of Adam, the first Korean virtual singer, and the others who pioneered a whole new category of entertainers. In the late 90s, Atomsoft, a small tech company, asked if virtual idols could succeed in the same way as traditional singers. As a way to answer this question, our story begins in 1996 Japan. A massive Japanese entertainment company partnered with the top-notch computer graphics team are about to launch their groundbreaking project, DK96. This is the quote brainchild of a three-man computer graphics team at Hori Pro Inc. When speaking of first-gen virtual idols, it's almost impossible not to bring up the very first celebrity of their kind, Kyoko Date. As described by Hori Pro, Kyoko was born as the first daughter of a Japanese couple who ran a popular sushi bar. Working part-time at a fast food chain, Kyoko was scouted and signed with the agency. The singer first emerged on the scene as the ultimate cool teen girl from Tokyo, making her debut with the pop single Love Communication. The only catch was she was fictional. Kyoko Date is an idol of the internet as she is considered to be the world's first virtual singer. The singer was created by Hori Pro and Visual Science Laboratory, VSL for short, to bring her to life by using full motion capture techniques. It's actually a very efficient way to make pop stars. You might have someone who can sing but isn't very good looking, or they can't sing but they're a great dancer. Kyoko combines the best of everyone. Although she was from the virtual world, she was treated as any other talent by the agency, which included all the advantages. As a result, Love Communication received plenty of airtime on radio stations, which led to a weekly radio show featuring the virtual teen singer. Hori Pro saw the massive potential for the cyber sensation and began designing plans for concerts, tours, and features on television. We're going to realize that with all these channels coming up, they are not going to have enough stars to appear on TV. So, after they run out of real humans, they're going to need virtual idols. But we can't afford to wait until that happens. We have to launch virtual stars now. However, by the time they began to take action, Kyoko's popularity began to fade. In an era where CDs were one of the most popular forms of media consumption, Kyoko sold fewer than 30,000 copies. By contrast, J-pop idols of the 90s such as Nami Amuro sold in the millions with their debut album. Netizens wondered if her 15 minutes of fame were up. In 1999, Kyoko became a sensation in Japan's neighboring country, South Korea. Now as Diki, short for Digital Kids, Kyoko teleported to South Korea as soon as they partially lifted the ban on Japanese culture and media. Between became Kyoko's first Korean release. The album's name held two messages. It was an attempt to crumble what had been an impenetrable wall between Japanese and Korean cultures, becoming a symbol of cultural exchange. The second meaning was her travels between the real world and virtual world. Featured on the album was Albatross. The cyber singer's Korean debut was widely accepted. Albatross received plenty of nationwide airtime on the radio and on music shows which attracted listeners, immediately turning them into fans. A week after Between's release, a Hori Pro representative shared her South Korean website was visited by more than 15,000 people and 200 teens signed up for her fan club. In addition, they received hundreds of emails of fans expressing their love for the cyber singer, even a few marriage proposals. With time, Kyoko's success became stagnant, eventually being dethroned by a new blue-haired it girl who has held onto the crown ever since. Wow, if she's unpopular, well, just tell everyone uh, she got married. Given her status as the world's first virtual singer, Kyoko became an enduring part of Japanese pop culture. But our story doesn't end here. Before I continue, I think it's time for a quick snack break and mention today's sponsor, Clipbox. Book. 
of photos from the entire album. I opened up this dang box and it was just all the most beautiful BTS related goodies in the world. Mm -hmm. Do you see my outfit already right now? It's like this and this. Yeah. You're ready to go to the concert right I now. Just and These are my two brain cells. If you're a pupper, you need to try Clute Box. Clute Box specially curates a box full of collectible K pop merch and delicious Korean snacks straight to your door every season. Just go to clutebox.com, choose your favorite gay pop group and member, and don't forget to enjoy Clute Box with your friends. You know what I mean? Only if we had this when yeah. we were watching the Blackpink concert uh, last I year. No. Like you should go ahead and get one. Thank you so much, Clue Box. So what are you waiting for? Go snag your box today, and don't forget to use code Midnight for five percent off. After witnessing the rise of Hori Pearl's virtual talent, Kyoko Date, and the rise of South Korean boy groups in the 90s such as Sotaji and Boys, the team behind Adamsoft were driven to develop their very own cyber sensation. The team went to work and began building their dream talent. It took two years, a team of five developers, and a generous investment to create the cyber celebrity. Similar to Kyoko's fictional background, Adamsoft also provided the virtual talent with human attributes to sprinkle in some sort of essence of humanity. Personal details such as his birthday, blood type, and eyesight were included in the detailed profile. In addition, he was given characteristics such as his likes and dislikes that would make him appear more relatable. As for his sculpted appearance, Adam was made to emulate the heartthrobs of the 90s, making him fit the ideal type among South Korean teens. <laughs> 잘해요. 네, 잘해요. 아, 근데 오빠는 가수 중에 누굴 제일 좋아하세요? 서태지를 좋아해요. 어, 저희도 서태지 되게 좋아해요. <웃음> 오빠는 혼자 지낼 때 뭐하고 계세요? 요즘은 기타를 많이 쳐요. 어, 오빠 사인 좀 해주세요. 어, 어, 어디 갔지? 어, the production 어, company acknowledged 90s actor Won Bin as the point of reference as he was considered the most handsome man in Korea at the time. The only real thing about Adam was his voice, and even then it went uncredited for years. We'll put a pin in this as we'll come back to it later on in the video. Adam successfully debuted in the winter of 1998, warming the hearts of teen girls and young women all over South Korea. His single, There Is No Love In The World, off his Genesis album, was a rock ballad that was surprisingly well received. The album sold an astounding 200,000 copies and appeared in a popular music ranking program. Before Adam debuted, he was invited to the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology and became an honorary student. Around 2,000 students and parents attended the event, filling the auditorium with exclamations of wows all around. 33-year-old CEO of Adamsoft, Park Jung-man, explained the inspiration behind creating the fictional singer. Park explained, After the success of So Ji, I wanted to make a cyberhuman with the group as characters, but So Ji didn't like it, so I created a cyberhuman named Adam with a completely new humanoid. Within a short period, his website alone recorded 300,000 hits in traffic, and 8,000 of those became loyal fan club members to the virtual singer. The ambitious CEO had big plans for Adam. In an interview with KBS, he said, First of all, we plan to show it through the media first as a music video, then we are planning a recorded broadcast, a live broadcast, a concert, and if even possible, put Adam in a robot body and make him act like a living person. In no time, Adam's face was plastered all over different types of merch, ranging from stationery, toys, shoes, and all sorts of other memorabilia that can still be found on Korea's version of eBay. Additionally, the singer starred in a commercial for LG's Lamonia drink and was in negotiation for five other commercials. His range of activities did not stop there. The virtual singer appeared on Korean television, having segments fully dedicated to him and a surprising fashion campaign. A few months after the singer debuted, Adam teamed up with the clothing company. Daehyun, a Korean business owner for the Japanese clothing brand Nice Scrap, held an event to recruit female models to work with Adam. 20 participants competed in the contest where one lucky winner would receive a gift certificate for the clothing brand and model alongside Adam. In just three months after his debut, Adam Sop ranked in 500 million won or just a little under 400,000 USD. His popularity only continued to grow. The rock ballad eventually became a cheering song for the 1998 World Cup in France, which exposed Adam to a broader audience. 
Naturally, with more tension on the singer, Adam Soft worked hastily to produce a second album. While Adam experienced explosive popularity, five months and 400 million won later, another South Korean cyber act under the name Lucia manifested at the scene. Unlike Adamsoft and Hori Pro, who created fictional backstories and human attributes for their virtual talents, Lucia's company, Hyundai Information, emphasized her computerized concept with various digital elements such as her height, weight, and age. Lucia was created by using 3D stereoscopic production technology and was considered the female counterpart to Adam. Lucia established herself as a singer with her first album, The Stream of Time, with the single, The Reasons I Came to This World. The music video was made with the latest graphics at the time, which made it enjoyable to watch. The dance trot single gained great popularity, selling 60,000 copies. Fans of the song believed if the song had been released by a human singer, the reasons I came to this world would have performed exponentially well on the charts, as it had a catchy and well-executed rap similar to the songs of that era. Just like the other cyber singers, Lucia had her own website. As soon as one entered the site, the user was greeted with a collage of photos of the singer. Her concept was developed based on an innocent high school girl living in a modern city to appeal to a wide audience. The singer began to model and participate in various campaigns shortly after her debut and eventually expanded her career by venturing in writing poetry and novels. By 1999, Lucy abandoned her innocent look with her second album, AD 2015, and emphasized a mature appeal. The music video for her single, Feeling of Love, stars Lucia as a female warrior and features a futuristic war. Some in her community disagreed with her dramatic image shift, as they believed her new concept did not fit the theme of the song. Despite playing on several radio stations, AD 2015 only managed to sell 30,000 copies. Along with Adam and Lucia, a third cyber celebrity appeared by the name of Saida, developed by YesNet. Saida was also a virtual female singer that had this sort of boyish charm. She debuted with her first single, I Hate the Truth, and attracted a bit of attention. <laughs> had big plans as well, as her company planned to expand her activities to modeling and starring in movies. By September 1998, the trio's companies came together and formed the CIA, Cyber Idol Association. The group's goal was to develop and grow the cyber character-related industry. At the same time, Adam and Lucia were being shipped together and had an entire love story planned out. Lucia would go to an all-women's university and meet Adam during this time. The two would naturally go on dates and eventually get virtually married, followed by conceiving a virtual offspring. Slowly, the wave of fictional celebrities grew over time as more entertainment companies saw the value in virtual artists. What made them so appealing to entertainment companies was although they were a massive monetary investment, there was no human limitation to what they can do. There are no health restrictions, they would never be involved in scandals, and they could perform on a global scale, speaking and singing in any language, and could perform simultaneously all over the world. Yet despite these advantages, the issue greatly outweighed the benefits, and one day, Adam just disappeared. Adam Soft took advantage of his growing popularity from his first album and released a second CD the following year. In June of 1999, Adam released Exodus with Wish serving as the single. This rock ballad was used as a theme song for Striker, a Korean teen movie from the 2000s. A second music video under the title The Wind was also released. Adam had several flaws which made people turn the other way. His lack of expressions and unnatural movements became apparent in the first music video. For the Wind music video, the developer team wanted to improve his flaws and focus on details of Adam's facial expressions, movements, and synchronization. Back then, producing content was incredibly expensive, costing upwards of several million won. The price tag far exceeded the cost of simply paying for new talent, but Adamsoft viewed it as a pioneering investment in a new genre. Around this time, Adamsoft was in talks of debuting their singer in China by remaking both of his albums in Chinese and sung by a Chinese singer. The tech company teamed up with Starmaker, a large Chinese entertainment company that would help achieve this dream. Unfortunately, the plans fell through, leading his career to take an even bigger hit. Once his second album was considered a commercial failure, Adamsoft no longer had the financial capacity to keep the project going. This landed Adam into an early retirement and a one-way ticket to the depths of obscurity. 
However, before the team laid Adam to rest, the singer was set to appear on a 60-minute program where he would be interviewed. However, the company had to pull out of the project due to the technological limitations and the amount of money it took to produce a few movements. Park Jae-min revealed the 3D image processing technology was not enough to support his activities as a celebrity. To appear on a TV music program for 30 seconds, five or six developers had to work day and night for about two months. It also called tens of thousands of dollars. Contrary to the real reason behind his disappearance, rumors began to circulate in the community. The first to spread was whether he met his end due to the Y2K virus or was sent to fulfill his military duties. After Adam's downfall, Adamsoft needed to come up with another way to keep them afloat. Trown in debt, rent was due, Adamsoft had one more chance to save their tech company, and they found that answer in an unexpected corner. Adamsoft reinvented itself as an online game company and received attention by developing and servicing one of the world's first online soccer games, Gangjin Soccer. The company shifted its focus on online gaming and planned to launch simulation and 3D car chasing games down the line. Kung Jin Soccer was enough to keep them afloat for the time being, but in the long run, Adamsoft eventually went bankrupt in 2004. So what does this mean for Adam? Would the public ever hear from him again? Those who had not forgotten the name Adam were desperate for new content and begging for his return. In 2016, the name Adam began trending on platforms all across South Korea. This was the same Adam from almost two decades ago. A startup company was in the works of soft rebooting Adam through a talk show and concert held in Hongdae. The creator behind this campaign, Korea Culture Management Research Institute, explained the reasons for bringing back the cyber singer. The internet and smart devices are developed day by day. People expect more new content, but now, the content is not keeping up with the advancements of technology. So we prepared 2016 Adam. Adam, in 1998, is reborn in the cyber world in 2016. 2016 Adam will meet the public through smart devices such as webtoons, video content, games, characters, as well as music and singing activities. 2016 Adam will be the protagonist of the new beginning of cyber entertainment. The news of Adam's resurrection was met with negative attention. The company had set a goal of raising 500,000 won, or a little less than 400 USD. The project was backed by 18 supporters but never saw the light of day as the crowdfunding failed 50,000 won short of its goal. With rumors of Adam making a comeback in the second half of the year, a former developer for Adam, Lee Young Soo, reminisced about his cyber child. He said, Since the cyber matrix world is intertwined with our reality through a cycle of death and rebirth, Adam does not grow old, let alone die. He further detailed Adam's so-called whereabouts since leaving the spotlight. After retiring as a singer, Adam changed his job to a designer. Perhaps we won't be seeing Adam back in the music industry anytime soon, but fans are still hopeful for his return. While the virtual singer's whereabouts were revealed, many questioned what happened to his voice actor. In 1994, a young man with a passion for singing debuts in a three-member alternative rock band before another opportunity presented itself. Park Sung Cho was given a chance to participate in a revolutionary project that would change the music industry forever. Or so he was told. He would be a star in every sense of the word, adored by fans across the nation and perhaps all over the world. All he had to do was lend his voice in movements. As a result of the tantalizing offer, the young ambitious singer accepted naively. As good as the deal seemed, the only catch was he would remain a faceless singer. Puck was under contract that prohibited him from revealing his identity. He was also allegedly threatened by his management not to debut as himself or reveal that he is Adam or quote, Adam would die. Similar to Kyoko, both companies felt revealing the real people behind these acts would completely shatter the illusion. Adam's retirement changed the trajectory of Pac's career. He later found work singing an OST for the 2001 SBS drama Beautiful Days under the stage name Zero. From then on out, he slowly rebuilt his career. The drama and OST were such a big hit in Japan that naturally, a Japanese record label contacted the South Korean singer. As Zero, he pursued a career in Japan and did over 200 gigs a year. After his contract expired with Adamsoft, he claimed his rightful position as the voice of Adam on several programs. First in 2001, and later in 2013 on SBS Midnight TV Entertainment, and once again in 2018 on the show Sugarman 2, where he sang Adam's debut song for the first time as himself. Adam 
Adam, who was once an icon symbolizing cutting edge technology, eventually disappeared into the embrace of the developing era and now only became the subject of a caricature. Unlike the past in which these virtual celebrities had unnatural graphics and facial expressions, today's virtual celebrities appear so lifelike due to technological advancements that they could almost be mistaken for real humans. The industry is currently seeing a surge of virtual idols and influencers. Will virtual idols continue to stay a novelty or will companies only continue to build upon the idea and surpass traditional singers? Personally, I don't see them going anywhere anytime soon. In fact, I only see them building upon the idea. According to Bloomberg News, many companies are using virtual humans as marketing tools, some companies making billions through virtual humans. In the IT industry, there is a saying that a well-made virtual human is better than making a new product. The virtual human market is growing explosively every year. The size of human-led influencer market was 7.6 trillion won in 2020, of which virtual humans accounted for only 2.4 trillion won, which is a third of that. However, by 2025, the size of the virtual human market is expected to surpass that of human influencers at 14 trillion won. With that being said, Thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.